Here are some quick examples. This free and open source software lets you split songs into individual stems, so into individual instrument and vocal tracks in a matter of seconds, and it's really easy to install. So let me show you how to quickly set it up in just about a few minutes. The ultimate vocal remover made by these guys here utilizes quite a few AI models, including the models trained by the software developers themselves, to help you split full tracks into stems and quickly make acapellas out of any song you choose. Pretty useful when you're a music producer, a DJ, or you just want to sing karaoke and you don't have an instrumental track of your favorite tune on hand. So let's begin the setup. First, go ahead and locate the UVR repository. There is also a main official website for the software, however it will still redirect you to the GitHub page for the download. If you can't find it, the link is in the description below. This software has really low requirements and can work using either your CPU or your graphics card. The minimum recommended GPU model is the NVIDIA RTX 1060 with 6GB of VRAM. In general though, almost every GPU with 8GB of VRAM or more should be more than enough to run it. I, for example, am using it with my older RTX 2070 Super and the conversions take just about a few seconds for 3 or 4 minute songs. If you have an older GPU, don't worry, you will still be able to convert your tracks using just your CPU, it will just take a little bit more time. Right there on the main page you will notice the link to the Windows package download. Very important note. If you're using an AMD or Intel Arc graphics card rather than one from Nvidia, you need to download a different package which is linked below the Windows ones. Still, note that the support for the AMD version of the software is limited, at least for now. If you're not using Windows but rather Mac or Linux, there are also appropriate versions of the software for your OS, once again the links for these are located below alongside the detailed installation instructions. Since we're using Windows here, I will download the compatible software package. We could go with a manual installation, however there's no need to, as the exe file we've just downloaded contains a simple one-click installer. Double-click the installer file to run it. If it doesn't start or if it starts and then closes immediately, make sure that it's added to your Microsoft Defender exclusions list so that Windows doesn't stop it from running. Accept the agreement, select your preferred installation path and optionally create a desktop shortcut for the tool. Once the installation process is finished, you can start the software right away. And here is the main interface. Let's do a quick rundown of the settings you can change here, because some of these can be really important. On the very top you can find the input and output fields. The input is the full song you want to divide into stems or make an a cappella or instrumental from, and the output is the folder in which you want to save your newly generated audio files. Further down, in this drop-down menu, you can choose between quite a few different processing options, each of which will let you utilize different stem separation models. Depending on the processing method you'll choose, you will be able to export different stem combinations and choose different secondary options. Different models can give you drastically different results with some tracks, so if your first separated track doesn't sound quite alright, you should pick a different model to handle the process and see if the results are better. An official Reddit post by the UVR developers makes a much better job at explaining the different model types, so I leave a link to it in the description below, as I don't want this video to get too long. There is also an ensemble mode, which lets you run the track conversion process with a few different chosen models at once, if you'd like to. When using the ensemble mode, you can select the models in the available models window on the right side of the UI. If you want to use your GPU for the conversion process, and you really should if your graphics card is relatively recent and has 8GB of VRAM on board, be sure to check the GPU conversion box here. If you want to use your CPU, leave this box unchecked, but be warned, the stem separation process can take much longer if it's not using your graphics card. Now, there are also a few model-specific settings you might want to know about. The VR architecture models let you adjust both the window size and the aggression setting. The first one is a speed quality trade-off. The larger the window value, the faster the conversion process and higher resource usage with lower output quality, and vice versa. 512 is the default setting for an average conversion quality and balanced resource usage. The aggression setting allows you to set how strong the vocal removal will be. 10 should be the default here for most of the models separating vocals from the instrumental track. The MDX Net models let you modify two different settings, segment size and overlap. The segment size setting controls how much data will be processed at once in one segment. 
The larger the segment size, the more system resources the conversion process will use, but the higher the quality of your output can be. The overlap settings control the overlap between the so-called prediction windows. The higher you set the overlap, the higher the quality of your output can get, but the conversion time will increase accordingly. Once again, if you're doing your first test conversion, it's best to leave these at their default values. Finally, the Demux model is the one you want to use if you don't just want to split the vocals and the instrumental, but you also want to have the bass, drums and other instruments in separate audio files after the conversion finishes. This model also has two settings, one of which tells the software which stems you want to export, and the other, the segment setting, which essentially works the same as the segment setting in the MDXNet models. If you need more information, all of the settings are explained rather nicely in the floating tooltips, which appear once you hover over a certain option within the software. Lastly, you can of course select which file format you want your stems to be exported to. You can choose between WAV, FLAC and MP3. And another important note. If you don't have FFmpeg installed on your system, the software will throw an error if you attempt to convert the track into a non-WAV file. If you need a quick 3-minute guide on installing FFmpeg on Windows 10 and 11, there is one on this very channel. If you don't plan to export your tracks to non-WAV files, however, you don't need to worry about that. Here is how long an example conversion takes on my RTX 2070 Super with 8GB of VRAM. And here are the results. I'm not usually the type to rush into the night. In the main software settings menu here, there are much more options available. These include more options for the models the software uses and more output file format settings. When doing your first conversion, you can safely leave this at default. There are also some more vocal splitting options available here, including automatic removal of reverb from the sample vocals and a vocal split mode which is able to export lead vocals and the backing vocals to separate files. In the last section, which is the download center, you can download a lot of different models that you can use for your conversions. The models listed here are mostly either very specific versions of the mainline models or models made to be stem specific, for example optimized for exporting drum tracks. For casual usage you don't need to worry about this at all, however if you'd like to experiment later on, these are here for you. That's it, it was quite simple wasn't it? As always consider donating to the developers of this software if you'd like to support open source projects like this. I'll leave a link to their buy me a coffee page below. Thank you very much for watching and please do check out my other videos about interesting AI related free software you can easily run on your PC. If you enjoyed the video please do leave a like or a comment and I hope to see you next time. Bye!